Welcome. My name is Dylan Young, a Sitecore Technology MVP, and today we will be covering Sitecore PowerShell extensions and how to get that installed in a Sitecore Docker instance. Make sure if you're enjoying my series on Docker to subscribe. That way you can get notified of the videos that I'm releasing as I'm releasing them or, or check me out on Twitter. Um, that's usually where I publicize the release of those videos. And if you like today's video or any of my other videos, please feel free or make sure to uh, like those videos. That way others can find those videos as well. So go ahead and get started. The focus is not necessarily just using an SPE already set up for CM instance. I'm going to be using the asset images, which is similar to all the other videos that I've been doing on Horizon and and SMS and, and JSS and et cetera, or even custom images. So uh, to get started, we're gonna actually open up Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and do that. And what you'll notice here is that we've already done videos on other topics, so they're actually represented here. I'm just gonna keep adding to this list. Our, our image is gonna actually contain lots of different images, custom asset images that we're compiling together to make up our custom CM instance in this case. So from a uh, logistical standpoint, SPE is going to require uh, database changes, in this case item changes for Sitecore, and it's also going to consist of file changes as well. So uh, we're going to be making changes to our CM and our MS SQL. So that before we start making modifications to those Docker files directly, I want to go into our Docker Compose override file and, and make changes there first. So we basically, as if you've watched the other videos in this series, you've, you've seen that all I'm essentially doing is adding another image. That image is an asset image, which basically contains all the files that are needed for SPE to run. That can be DAC pack files for database changes, and that can also be uh, just files that will be placed into our CM instance. So to do that, all we need to do is specify a new um, args parameter for SPE. So to do that, we will just go SPE image and we will reuse this variable because we're pulling from the Sitecore Docker modules registry, which is really just the same as a regular registry, except for it has an additional slash modules at the end, which will I'll show in my .env file real quick. So if we look in here, we can see that it's just se or ser.sitecore.com slash sxp slash modules. So that's all it is. And then, so if we go back to the override file and make sure you're making these changes to the override file because those are where you're gonna make your customizations. The regular Docker Compose represents an out of the box XP0 in this case. So uh, the name of the module uh, is just SP SPE assets. And what I'm doing that, that helps me kind of figure this out is there's two documents that I'm using. One is the Sitecore tags uh, listing that's in the Sitecore Docker images GitHub repository. So like I like you see, I've searched for SPE. Um, you, you'll first see a bunch of SPE images that are not asset images. They're just a kind of a standalone CM or CD, depending on the topology. But what you really want is the asset images is, is what I'm demonstrating today. So I've searched SPE assets is what we're referencing. And then we're going to use one of these tags uh, below. I believe since we're using the latest version of Sitecore 10.1, I will probably just go ahead and use the 6.2. Well, yeah, 6.2.383-1809. It looks like this one, 6.2.383, 6 is for 10.0. So we won't use that. We'll use the latest version for this. And then the other place that I'm getting uh, kind of details about what I'm going to be doing today is there's actually, and I'll link to this in the description, there is a uh, modules reference that details basically all the videos that I'm doing, it just details the steps that you're going to be doing to install. And that's really all we're going to be doing today. Super simple stuff here. Now that I know what I need to reference, I'm just going to reference the tag that I just mentioned. 
Uh, let me copy and paste it real quick, just so it's a little simple, so I don't make any spelling mistakes. That is it right there. And then I need to specify this for both the CM as well as uh, MS SQL. And MS SQL is up here, and I will mention it again up here, SBE image. And then actually I copied the whole thing, so I shouldn't have done that, but so there, so that's the only modifications that we need to make to our Docker Compose override. Now we can start making our changes to the CM. CM will be files only, and then MS SQL will be essentially taking the DAC pack files, extracting what's in them, putting those in our Sitecore instance, and that way all the database items will exist there. So let's start with the MS SQL first. And just like the these other references, we're basically gonna do the same thing. So, and, and again, it doesn't really matter where you place this. Actually, I'm stepping a little out of order. I need to also make sure we specify the args up here. So site core, or what I call it, site core. I think I called it SPE image. Hopefully I didn't, or hopefully I got that right. Um, and then I'm going to say from SPE image as SPE. And then now down here, we can just, it just says what the name of that image is. We just call it SPE. So we'll call it SPE there. And then these really just are almost identical. They're just different uh, paths here from the different images that we're calling. Um, but relatively the same steps that we're doing. That's why this, this video is fairly straightforward. If you've done headless, if you've done horizon, the steps are gonna be relatively the same. And I will be doing a video also on SXA after this. So obviously you install SPE, then you'd install SXA using asset images. So that's all we need to do for our MS SQL instance. So now we just need to make some changes to the CM. So we go into the CM and really all we need to do is first, the step I forgot last time, uh, just need to specify args SPE image. And then up here, uh, or down here I should say, SPE image as SPE. And then we're just gonna copy files from our SPE asset image into our CM image that we're building. Again, not really specific any order here. Probably if I was doing this professionally, I'd probably make them all standardized and, and make the order the same, but I don't really remember which order I put them in. So I'm just gonna randomly put them in. So here again, this is from SPE. And then this path doesn't need to be this. You could if you wanted to, but we're since we're specifying the work directory up here um, as the CINET pub WW root, uh, we don't need to do the hard or hard coded path, but you can if you want. So just do it like that, should be fine. We're just taking from the SPE image C modules, CM content, and then placing that basically in our root of the site. Uh, just kind of an overlay of that. So that's pretty much all the modifications we need to make. Obviously, the more images, the asset images that you use, the less work you have to do. The first one, you you always have to add those environment variables that you want to use in your Docker Compose override. Uh, but for this, we don't need to do much more than that. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And so the next steps is we need to really build up um, are, well, there's two steps. Um, when we have database changes, we need to clean data or basically wipe out our database that we've been previously using uh, on previous runs. So first I'll just start with clean data. Basically all that does, and, and you know, it's a custom script that you can write. It's in the Sitecore Docker examples. All it does is remove all the data from your data folder, as well as your deploy folder if you written it to do that. Uh, just using PowerShell commands. So that's one step. The other step is that um, you need to do a Docker Compose build. So let's do that next. And I always like to run it no cache, just so it doesn't cache anything. 
and then just click enter and just let that run. Now, as you can see, the Docker build is complete. So the next step is to just Docker compose up our environment since that is what we need. We're gonna just confirm that SPE was installed correctly. So all we're doing is a Docker compose up dash D for detach mode. And now you can see that all our containers have been created. So the next step, all we need to do is go back into our browser and refresh or, or type in cm.training.localhost slash sitecore in our browser. If you get the 404 page not found, this is just that the CM instance hasn't all been spun up all the way yet. So just gotta give it a couple seconds and then you should be able to get into your CM instance. Now up comes our identity server login. So all we just type in admin B and then click login. And then we should be presented with our launch pad here shortly. And there we go. Uh, so here is our launch pad. Um, as you can see, you can kind of already tell that PowerShell extensions were installed correctly because you can already see the PowerShell ISE here and the PowerShell reports. We can click on this PowerShell ISE real quick. And just like that, here is the PowerShell extension. So we are set. So that concludes today's video. Hopefully uh, those that are following along with this session uh, were able to get uh, Sitecore PowerShell extensions working in their custom Sitecore Dockerized instance. If you could not, please uh, please comment below and either I or somebody else will help you. Uh, also go out to the Sitecore Slack uh, Docker uh, channel and uh, just list your issues and we'll see if we can help you out. So good luck and thank you.